The story of Dragon Ball begins long ago in a forest far away from civilization as we see a young boy rolling along and speaking to some monkeys in the treetops. As the boy arrives home, we witness as he throws a log twice his size in the air and kicks it clean into pieces, treating it as his exercise for the day. After speaking to an artifact which he refers to as Grandpa, the boy heads off into the woods to look for some food and we cut to a young girl who appears to be nearby looking for something as she drives off to investigate. After successfully managing Managing to use himself as bait to catch a giant fish, the boy makes his way home but is almost hit by a car courtesy of the same young girl we saw before. Assuming the car to be a monster trying to steal his fish, the boy lifts and throws it with the girl inside, goading it to fight. Shocked, the young girl emerges from the car and shoots the boy in the head, only to find that the bullets were ineffective. Quickly trying to explain the misunderstanding to a now understandably upset young boy, the girl removes herself from the vehicle entirely, and the boy is surprised to meet another human, let alone a girl who his grandpa had always told him to be nice to if he met one. The boy wants to know more about the monster he threw and asks the girl how she caught it. However, she explains that it's not a monster, but a car, to which the young boy examines it some more, then inquiring whether the girl is from a civilization. The girl says she's from the west, and he says she should come with him to his house to have a feast because she's a woman. The girl agrees and they head towards the boy's home, the girl thinking that this stranger might be a little weird, but she could use his strength to aid her. They arrive at his house, and the boy tells the artifact who he calls grandpa that he brought back a human woman. The girl looks at grandpa and suddenly screams, exclaiming that she finally found another dragon ball as she rushes over to it to pick it up. The boy yells at her not to touch his grandpa's last possession, but she pulls out two more identical looking artifacts, much to the boy's surprise. She explains that the artifacts are called dragon balls and that there are seven in total, then stating that according to legend, once you collect all seven, you'll be granted a wish by the dragon god Shenron, but only one. The girl then says that she was once going to wish for a lifetime supply of strawberries, but she's reconsidered and will now collect the dragon balls to wish for a boyfriend. The girl then asks for the dragon ball that the boy has, but he refuses, prompting her to try to bribe him with a quick peek at her underwear, but of course, he's not interested. The girl then suggests that he join her in her search for the dragon balls instead, and the boy finally agrees, so long as he gets to hold on to his ball. The girl then thinks to herself how she'll now be able to get her wish granted and have a bodyguard at the same time. The boy asks how they'll be able to find the dragon balls, to which she introduces Produces her dragon radar, a tool used for the sole purpose of locating them. The two then prepare to head off, and the girl looks through her pouch to find a replacement for the car that the boy totaled so they can get around. Realizing she doesn't know the boy's name, she asks him, and he introduces himself as Son Goku. Goku acts the same, and she says her name is Bulma prompting Goku to laugh and make fun of it. Bulma pulls a case out of her pouch and uses a number 9 capsule as it explodes and reveals a motorcycle, much to the surprise of Goku, who surmises she must be a witch. Bulma explains that it's just a capsule often used in the city she's from, and the two take off on their new adventure. 20 minutes later as the two continue to ride, Bulma flies off a hill a little too high and lands, coming to a complete stop. She excuses herself to go and pee, much to Goku's confusion as he wonders why she wouldn't just go in front of him, but waits around for her to finish. Suddenly, he hears a loud shriek in the distance and runs toward it, then witnessing Bulma in the clutches of a pterodactyl, who tells Goku that Bulma is a friend of his and that he wants to talk to her about something in private. The monster then ties Goku to a tree and takes off, as the gullible young boy thought he was telling the truth. As the pterodactyl plans to feast on Bulma, she yells out to Goku to rescue her, as she's in imminent danger. Confused, Goku says she needs to make up her mind, but rushes toward Bulma's motorcycle or monster, who he thinks can fly. Goku starts it up and flies off a hill, same as Bulma earlier in an attempt to catch the two. The motorcycle is unable to make the distance, so Goku jumps out, unveiling a power pole that he had to whack the monster in the back of the neck, killing him as the three fall to what would appear to be certain death. However, Goku uses his pole to save Bulma, attaching her to a cliff in the wilderness to stop her fall, as she pees her pants in terror, making Goku laugh. Sometime that evening, the pair continue to ride off on another motorcycle, Goku opting optimistic that finding the last four Dragon Balls will be a piece of cake. Bulma decides to stop as it's getting late, and rather than prepare to sleep outside like Goku, she throws out a capsule from her case containing a house. Goku is of course surprised, thinking she must be using some kind of magic, but the two head inside 
inside, Goku wondering how Bulma was able to bring the sun into the home. Bulma turns on the TV and Goku is fascinated, but Bulma tells him that he stinks and needs to take a bath before they eat. Goku unaware of what a bath is, Bulma decides to give him one. While cleaning him, she wonders why Goku decided to attach a fake tail to his butt and tells him to remove it, but Goku tells her to stop and grabs the scrub brush with his tail and washes his own butt. Bulma freaks out as she realizes the tail is real and Goku surmises that only guys have them. Bulma then wonders if it's true as she's never seen another man naked before, but Goku then points out that his grandfather never had one, convincing Bulma that Goku's just weird. Bulma decides that she needs a bath herself, but while she's soaking, Goku walks in and surprises her, asking why she has an extra butt. She yells that it's just her chest and asks how old he is. Goku says 14, prompting Bulma to call him a perv as they're only two years apart in age and kicks him out. As Bulma dries her hair, Goku says that he's hungry and the two sit down to eat. Goku complains that the bread he's eating has no flavor and that the soup is bitter. Bulma explains that it's coffee though, not soup, so Goku decides to head out and hunt for some better food to get his strength back. Goku later returns to the house with a centipede and a wolf hanging from the end of his power pole, but Bulma is disgusted and slams the door in his face. Back inside, Goku says it's been a while since he slept with someone else. Bulma, however, tells him they won't be sleeping together as she rolls out a spot on the floor. Goku does doesn't understand why it's so weird since he used to sleep on his grandpa like a pillow, but Bulma yells at him for thinking he could do that with her. As she brushes her teeth, she asks Goku about his parents. Goku says he just knows his grandpa found him abandoned in the mountains when he was a baby, and Bulma figures he was abandoned since he had a tail. Goku asks if she was also abandoned for having a butt on her chest, and she yells that it's not a butt and that she wasn't abandoned. She informs him that she's on summer vacation, so she only has another 30 days to find the remaining Dragon Balls. But but Goku falls asleep, uninterested in the story. The next morning, Goku wakes up and first notices an empty sleeping spot on Bulma. He lies down between her legs like he used to do with his grandpa, but notices something doesn't feel right. He pats her downstairs area, takes off her panties, and screams in horror. Bulma wakes up suddenly and asks him what's wrong, and Goku says that she's lost her balls. Bulma quickly runs over to the Dragon Balls and sees that they're all there. She yells at him for surprising her like that, and meanwhile, a shadowy figure approaches the capsule house. Later, Goku can't believe Bulma's taking so long to get ready in the morning and tells her if she moves any slower, she'll turn into a turtle. Bulma does her usual whining and decides to have some coffee, offering Goku some, but Goku declines and goes outside to exercise. He runs around, picking up and crushing a huge rock. He runs over to another and attempts to do the same, but it turns out to be a large sea turtle. Goku yells that Bulma really did turn into a turtle, but Bulma comes outside to see what's happening. Finding Goku, she wonders why a sea turtle is so far away from the sea. The turtle asks if they could spare some seawater and maybe some seaweed, so Bulma goes and gets him a bucket filled with it. The turtle says he was out looking for mushrooms, but when he took a wrong turn, he lost his way. He explains that he's been trying to find the sea for a while now, stating that it's been a year. Bulma looks on the map and says the sea is about 120 kilometers south from their current location. Goku offers to take the turtle back, but Bulma says that there's no time for that and that it has nothing to do with them. Goku says he'll just go alone then, and he leaves, carrying the turtle on his back. Bulma wonders if he'll be back, and looks around to see a huge dinosaur passing close to the house. She quickly hops on the motorcycle and catches up with him, Goku then pointing out that she just got scared all alone and changed her mind. The three continue along, until a giant bear with a mohawk spots them, demanding they give the sea turtle to him, as it's his favorite food. Bulma insists that Goku give up the turtle, but he refuses. The bear pulls out a giant sword, and Goku puts the turtle aside so he won't get hurt. The bear swipes at him a few times, but misses, and Goku Goku jumps on the blade of his sword. He then hops onto the bear's nose and punches him with the rock paper scissors technique to knock him out. Bulma and the turtle are impressed by his strength and Goku asks the turtle if he's really delicious. The turtle insists that he isn't though and Goku agrees as they continue on. They finally arrive at the beach and the turtle is excited that he's reached the sea. He gratefully thanks Goku for helping him and urges him to wait there as he'll be back with a reward. A while later, the turtle returns with a flashy old man on his back. The old man says hello and is oddly enough wearing a turtle shell on his back. The old man introduces himself as the turtle hermit or Roshi and asks the turtle who saved him. The turtle says it was Goku and grateful for his good deed, 
Roshi gives Goku a present. He calls for the immortal phoenix, but nothing comes. The turtle says that the phoenix died from food poisoning, so Roshi comes up with a replacement, calling on the flying Nimbus, a small yellow cloud that flies down from the sky. Goku wonders how you're supposed to eat it, but Roshi exclaims that you don't eat it, you ride on it. Bulma thinks there's something odd about the cloud. Roshi then telling Goku that in order to ride the flying Nimbus, you must be pure of heart. Roshi decides to demonstrate, but instead falls right through, making Bulma laugh. Goku, however, jumps on next, having no trouble whatsoever, flying off into the sky as Bulma and Roshi are left on the ground in awe. Excited, Bulma says she wants one too, and so Roshi asks the turtle if she also helped him. He says that she didn't, and she yells at him saying that she gave him salt water. Roshi says that he doesn't have another flying Nimbus, but he can give her something else though, if he can get a quick look at her panties. Bulma is of course surprised, and the turtle yells at Roshi, as he can't believe he'd ask for something like that. Bulma agrees though, and lifts up her nightgown, showing Roshi way more than what he expected. He then wonders what would be good enough to give in return, but Bulma asks to see the thing hanging from his neck. Bulma calls Goku down from the sky, and shows him that she's found another Dragon Ball. Roshi says that he never promised to give it away, but Bulma nonchalantly flashes him again, so he hands it over. Over, wishing he'd brought a camera. They part ways, and Bulma and Goku ride off down a road back to the capsule house. Bulma goes in to change her clothes and screams. Goku runs in, and finds Bulma wondering why her panties are here. She then freaks out about not having any on when she flashed Roshi. Goku reassures her that it's okay because she doesn't need them to survive, leaving Bulma to ask him if he took them off of her while she was asleep. Goku admits to taking them off in the morning, and Bulma starts firing at him with a machine gun. Bulma then puts the house back in its capsule as Goku rubs his head and body from the gunshots. Assuming they'd make better time flying, Bulma asks to ride on the flying Nimbus, but she falls through as she's not pure of heart like Goku. She thinks that being too beautiful must be a sin, and the two set out in search for the next Dragon Ball. Three days pass, and they come across a seemingly deserted village where the fifth Dragon Ball is said to be. Goku says that he can sense someone, and they continue exploring. Bulma and Goku head into the empty village, and Bulma yells out to see if anyone's around, but it's still silent. She checks the dragon radar, and sees that the Dragon Ball is definitely in the village. Goku says that he knows there are people here, as he's sensing more and knocks at one of the doors, but there's no answer. Goku then punches through the door to get it open, and a mysterious figure comes from the inside and hits him over the head with an axe. Goku yells at the figure who's now shown to be a regular man, but he apologizes to him thinking that he's a person called Oolong, stating that he has plenty of food or money, but asks that he spare his daughter. Goku and Bulma ask who this Oolong is, and realizing they're not who he thought, the man invites them into his house. The the other villagers come to the house, and the man's daughter treats the bump on Goku's head. The man apologizes, and says that he thought Goku was Oolong, a shape-shifting monster. Bulma scolds the man as they could have been killed, and meanwhile, Goku pats the daughter in a familiar area, proclaiming that she's a girl. Bulma whacks him over the head for it, then asks the man who Oolong is. The man explains that he's a horrible demon who haunts their land, and nobody's ever seen his true form. He goes on to further explain that the day before, Oolong came and said that he'd be back tomorrow at noon to take his daughter as a bride. He says Oolong already ran off with some of the village daughters, and if they don't do what he says, he's threatened to kill and eat every villager. Bulma then pulls out a Dragon Ball, and asks the man if he's seen one like it before. He hasn't, but an old woman says she has one like that, and shows Bulma the six star ball. Bulma then says that if she gives the ball to them, they'll get rid of Oolong. The old woman is up for the offer, but wonders how a schoolgirl will be able to defeat a monster. Bulma, however, says it won't be her, and points to Goku, who's then seen patting the old woman as well. Bulma then comes up with a plan to use Goku as bait in the little girl's place, follow Oolong back to his lair where he kept all the other girls, beat him up, and rescue them. Goku agrees, but doesn't like wearing the dress at all. Oolong then appears in town, and Bulma yells for everyone to hide and leave the rest to her and Goku. Bulma, however, hides along with everyone else, telling Goku that she'll be praying for his success. Oolong arrives in the form of a demon in a tuxedo, and starts to check out Goku, thinking he's the daughter he was promised. Goku starts shaking, and Oolong thinks his new bride is scared, 
but actually, Goku just has to pee. Oolong decides to transform into a more pleasant looking form for this nervous girl, now a handsome young man, which Bulma can't resist. She steps out of the house, announcing her name and age. Oolong asks for her breast size, and Bulma proclaims she's a 34C. Oolong fantasizes about using that to his advantage, and wonders which girl he should take, coming to the conclusion that he'll just have both. He looks over though, and notices his bride peeing near a tree. Confused on how a young girl could do her business outside, Oolong looks over Goku's shoulder and gets more than he bargained for. Having not been able to stand being made a fool of, Oolong transforms into a bull, causing Bulma to snap out of her daze and run back into the house. She then yells to Goku to switch to plan B beating Oolong up, but not killing him so they can find the rest of the girls he took. Goku then takes off the dress, and he and Oolong prepare to fight. Oolong tells Goku that now would be the time to apologize for fooling him, but Goku just tells him to stop talking and fight. Oolong boasts some more, almost as if he's trying not to fight back, but Goku tells him to hurry up and attack. Suddenly, Oolong looks at the clock and then runs out of the village yelling for Goku to wait for a minute. Goku runs after him, only to find a pig dressed in a Chinese communist outfit standing outside the village. Goku asks if the pig has seen a bull, and the pig points to the left, having Goku run off in that direction. The pig reveals that this is Oolong's true form, as he can only stay transformed for 5 minutes, then having to wait another minute before he can transform again. Goku returns to the village and says Oolong's run off, but the pig looks at his watch. A whole minute's passed, so now he can transform again. A giant metal robot enters the village and challenges Goku, saying he's the strong Oolong once again, and he's going to put Goku in his soup and eat him. He then gets some soup on his thumb and burns himself, blaming Goku although Goku didn't do anything. A little boy then shoots Oolong in the back of the head with a slingshot, and his mom comes out and takes him away. Goku thinks Oolong seems really weak, but Oolong explains that he's the strongest in the world. He tries to question Goku's strength, but Goku says he's strong because his grandpa taught him martial arts. Oolong wants him to demonstrate his strength by breaking through three bricks with one hand, but Goku easily does it with one finger, and Oolong cowardly transforms into a bat and flies away. Boma yells at Goku to catch him so they can find out where his hideout and the girls are, so Goku calls for flying Nimbus and takes off after Oolong. Oolong notices that Goku is giving chase, and transforms again into a rocket to speed up. Goku however still maintains a steady chase until the 5 minutes run out, and Oolong turns back into a pig. Goku catches Oolong as he falls and takes him back to the village, where he's tied up and put on a leash. He apologizes and is told to return the girls, so he leads everyone to his house. The parents rush in, only to see their daughters relaxing and living a luxurious life. Oolong says that all he really wanted was just a nice, calm girl, so he's glad to get rid of these spoiled ones. After saving the girls and receiving the 6 star Dragon Ball, Goku, Bulma, and Oolong ride along a river in the capsule boat in search of the next. Goku asks why they brought Oolong with him, and Bulma says that his transformation abilities might come in handy. Goku then pats Oolong, same as the girls in the village, but Oolong yells that he never touch him again since he likes girls and hates men. Bulma announces that their next destination will be Mount Frypan, but Oolong freaking out says he's not going there, as it's home to the Ox King, a really scary guy. Oolong turns into a fish and dives into the water to escape, and as Goku takes off his clothes and prepares to swim after him, Bulma says she'll catch him. She takes off her panties and puts them on a fishing rod, and sure enough, she catches Oolong. Bulma then gives Oolong a candy ball, and tells him that if he proves himself useful, she'll give him her panties. She tells Goku he can't have one though, Oolong saying it's because he's more popular with the ladies. The boat then runs out of gas, and Bulma asks if Oolong can change into gasoline. He says no, and instead turns into an oar. Goku viciously paddles him along until they arrive at the shore and suddenly, Bulma notices her case full of capsules is missing. She says she probably dropped them in the river, and so she asks Oolong to become a fish and go find them, with a promised prize of panties for it. However, Oolong says it's impossible in such a deep river, and Bulma complains about the terrible situation they're in now, as they have nothing for shelter or transportation. Goku then suggests that Oolong turn into a bike for her, which she agrees with, and then notices Oolong is missing. Goku goes after him on the flying Nimbus, but is unable to locate him. Bulma then shouts out the word P several times, which causes Oolong to suddenly take a crap in some bushes in the woods. Bulma says it was the candy ball she gave him called the Pee Pee Candy, and shouting out Pee Pee will make anyone that ate it have diarrhea. Bulma has Oolong under her control now as he returns this time prepared to stay, and Goku takes a crack at yelling out the magic words, much to Oolong's displeasure. Bulma tells Oolong to turn into a bike, but he instead turns into a little scooter that can't support her weight. Oolong then comes up with a bright idea 
idea to turn into a pair of panties so Bulma can wear him, but it only pisses her off even more. Sometime later, the three wander into the desert. Bulma and Oolong are exhausted, and Goku can't believe they're walking so slow. The two then stop, as Bulma takes a rest under a uniquely shaped rock. Goku sits down with the two as well, and says he's hungry. Elsewhere, a tiny floating cat spots Goku and Oolong from a hideout, and runs inside to tell his friend Yamcha that they're sitting ducks out there. Yamcha thinks it's great, as it's been a while since they've had any prey. The cat known as Poir says they may have some capsules they can steal, and the two then take off in their vehicle, confronting Goku and Oolong face to face. Goku asks who they are, and Oolong begins to get worried. Yamcha and Poir introduce themselves as the hyenas that have made the desert their headquarters. Yamcha demands them to hand over any money and capsules they have, and Oolong recognizes Poir. Poir also recognizes Oolong, saying he was a pervert who got kicked out of the Southern Transformation Kindergarten School for taking the teacher's panties. He also used a bully Poir, making this interaction all the more annoying for the flying cat. The two of them start arguing, but Yamcha tells Goku and Oolong to hurry up and hand over their stuff. Oolong asks Goku if he's strong, and he confirms, prompting Oolong to get a boost of confidence, stating they have no intention of handing anything over. Yamcha then pulls out his sword, and Oolong tells Goku to handle it, but he doesn't seem to understand why he's supposed to fight this guy. Oolong yells that he's a bad guy and plans to kill them, Goku then asking why, as Oolong hides under the unique rocks where Bulma's napping. Yamcha swings at Goku with his sword, but Goku manages to dodge him. Goku in midair pulls out his power pole and comes down, clashing weapons with Yamcha. They separate, and Goku calls out for his power pole to extend, having Yamcha take a shot to the gut. Poir is worried about his friend, and Oolong is impressed that Goku really is strong. Yamcha asks about the weapon, and Goku explains that he got it from his dead grandfather. Yamcha, however, only knows one person who has an extending power pole, and asks Goku what his grandfather's name was. Goku says his grandpa was son Gohan, and Yamcha recognizes the name, as does Oolong, Yamcha now thinking he might actually be able to have some fun in this fight. Yamcha then uses his wolf fang fist, and Goku takes a beating, crashing into the rocks behind him. Believing Goku to have been defeated, Oolong turns into a fly and attempts to escape, but Poir turns into a fly swatter and swats him down. Yamcha tells the pig to hand over his valuables, and Oolong pulls out an M-sized capsule. Goku recovers from amongst the rubble, complaining about being hungry, but challenging Yamcha to fight further. The two exchange a few punches until Goku pokes his eyes and whacks him into the ground, breaking the manga panel in the process. Yamcha rushes at him again, and Goku feels like he's going to pass out from the hunger, when suddenly, Bulma wakes up. Yamcha spots her, and stops dead in his tracks and falls down. He and Poir retreat and ride away, Bulma then asking who that handsome guy was. Back at their hideout, Poir tells Yamcha that he's weak against women, Yamcha saying that he just gets too worked up whenever he sees one. Night falls, as our heroes relax and eat in Oolong's house wagon, Bulma scolding him from keeping it hidden from them in his capsule, but Oolong saying he was saving it for a special occasion. She inspects the shower and does her usual complaining, then telling Oolong not to peek at her, the pig then thinking to himself that he won't have to, as he has something better planned. She asks for some pajamas, and Oolong says he'll lend her some. Meanwhile at their hideout, Yamcha tells Poir they're going to steal Oolong's capsule now, as the sun is set. Poir wonders how as they still have a woman with them, but Yamcha tells him that he'll transform into the boy or the pig and leave the girl outside, so he can go in and steal it. Oolong's afraid that the bandits will come back to attack them, but Goku says he won't lose, since his stomach's filled up. Oolong then asks why he'd want to go to a place like Mount Frypan, to which Goku states it's because there's a Dragon Ball there, and shows him the one he has. At the same time, Yamcha and Poir make their way towards them. Yamcha sees that the capsule was a house wagon and thinks about the plan, deciding they'll check around first. Meanwhile, Bulma is taking a relaxing shower. Yamcha and Poir are just outside the bathroom window when they hear a girl's voice inside. Poir thinks it'll be easy if the other two are sleeping, and Yamcha decides to take a look through the window, seeing a lot more than he planned on. Yamcha freaks out, and Poir asks what's wrong, Bulma then looking out the window as she thought she heard something. Yamcha and Poir sneak over to another window, hearing the boy and pig inside. They overhear Goku explaining the Dragon Balls to Oolong. The two talk amongst themselves and decide they'll steal the Dragon Balls, Yamcha then stating that he can use their power to get rid of his fear of girls. Back inside, Oolong isn't all that interested in the Dragon Balls, but Goku wants to see the dragon, plus the search is good training for him. Oolong thinks he's a weirdo, and says all he's interested in is women. Goku suggests that Oolong could tell the dragon he 
wants a woman, and Oolong likes that idea. Goku doesn't understand why he likes women so much, and asks Oolong if he knows that women don't even have balls. Bulma then shows up and whacks Goku on the head. She's wrapped in a towel, and yells at Oolong about his pajamas being too small for her. He suggests sleeping naked, which she agrees to, but demands to have her clothes washed and cleaned by tomorrow. Oolong says he'll take care of it, and randomly offers her and Goku some juice, looking pleased as they drink it. Goku isn't a huge fan of the taste, but Oolong insists it'll make him stronger. Bulma then heads upstairs to go to bed, and yells for them to sleep downstairs, especially Oolong, or she'll use the words pee pee on him again. Oolong makes a remark about her body, but says she's got a bad personality, and Goku passes out on the couch not too long after. Oolong then reveals that the sleeping medicine that he used worked, and decides to head upstairs to fill up Bulma while she sleeps. Meanwhile, Par looks inside and sees that the woman is upstairs, so Yamcha tells him to turn into a key so he can sneak in. Poir does so, and Yamcha uses the key to slowly unlock the camper door as Oolong heads upstairs. They rush inside and notice Goku's out for the night, but there's no sign of the pig. Yamcha tells Poir to change into the kid and lure the woman and the pig outside. Oolong hears some noises below, and believing that it's Goku, he's surprised that he's awake. He sees Goku coming up the stairs, so he panics and transforms into Bulma, though not a very accurate version and completely covers the real Bulma up in the blanket. Bulma then greets Goku and tells him that Oolong went out for a walk. The fake Goku then convinces the fake Bulma to go outside, and Yamcha notices them leave. Yamcha then heads upstairs, figuring that's where they had the Dragon Balls, and sees a lumpy blanket, thinking that's where they must be hidden. He pulls up the blanket, and a distance away from the camper, the fake Goku changes back to Poir, thinking he's tricked Bulma. However, the fake Bulma changes back into Oolong, and the two of them start arguing. Poir then thinks to himself that if Oolong's out here, then Yamcha must be in danger. Yamcha then stumbles away from the camper, wide-eyed and in a daze, as once again, he saw way more than what he bargained for, and Poir leads him away, saying they'll retreat once again and come back later. The next morning, Oolong is in the driver's seat holding a shotgun, and Goku wakes up. Oolong says he was up all night because Yamcha and Poir tried to attack him again. Goku's surprised to have not noticed it, and Oolong regrets giving him the sleeping medicine after all. Bulma then wakes up stating her head hurts, and yells at Oolong about not washing her clothes, but Goku explains how Oolong was up all night watching out for the bad guys, which prompts her to start daydreaming about Yamcha. Oolong then says that he does have one outfit she can wear, and Bulma runs upstairs to try it on. In the meantime, Goku says he's hungry, and Oolong asks if that's all he ever says. Goku then begins eating a month's worth of food, much to Oolong's surprise. Upstairs, Bulma yells for Oolong, saying that she doesn't like the bunny outfit she found at all, but that's all he had. She then tells him to drive them to Mount Frypan now, since she has to do her makeup. At their hideout, Yamcha notices the group have started moving, so he tells Par to prepare his weapons so he can steal the Dragon Balls. Oolong drives the camper along, as Yamcha follows in his vehicle. Par drives, and Yamcha fires a missile at the camper, just as Bulma gets excited at seeing him again. The camper crashes, loses a tire, and Bulma gets knocked out. Yamcha demands the boy and pig to kindly hand over their Dragon Balls, but goes Goku sticks out his tongue and runs toward him, gearing up for round two. Yamcha hands Par his automatic rifle and decides to fight with his fists, preparing to use his wolf fang fist technique once more. Goku yells out he was hungry yesterday, but is ready now, and the two exchange a few punches. Goku then gets in a good kick to the face, knocking one of Yamcha's teeth out. Par turns into a mirror and shows him, and the two flee after Yamcha sees this. Oolong is really impressed by Goku's strength, but still, those guys did destroy their ride, so they'll have to walk from here on out. Meanwhile, Yamcha decides it would be easier to let those three find the Dragon Balls first, and then they could steal all seven from them at once. Goku carries the unconscious Bulma on his shoulders, and Oolong acts to be carried as well. Just then, Yamcha and Poir pull up in their vehicle, apologize, and give the group a capsule containing a replacement car. They bid them a farewell, and Oolong is a bit suspicious, but Goku thinks nothing of it, as they continue to head off to Mount Frypan. But little do they know, Yamcha and Poir installed a homing device in the car, and use it to follow them towards the Dragon Balls. Bulma, Oolong, and Goku continue down a road towards Mount Frypan in their car. Bulma wonders about the heat since they're heading north, and Oolong then explains the terror of Mount Frypan, stating how it used to be refreshing scenery. However, about 10 years ago, flames fell down from heaven and started burning the mountain, turning it and the weather to what it is now. They reach the mountain and notice it's covered in flames, explaining the heat. Oolong wants to leave, afraid of meeting the Ox King, but Bulma wants to know more about him. Oolong tells her how incredible incredibly scary he is, and how some even call him the Demon Lord. He explains that the top of the mountain is the Ox King's castle, 
full of lots of treasures, but many have tried to steal it, so the Ox King gets rid of them. Bulma says that the sixth Dragon Ball is most certainly in the castle, but according to Oolong, the Ox King himself isn't in there. He guards the castle from the foot of the mountain, because it was set ablaze when he was out on a picnic with his daughter. The fire is so great that the Ox King is unable to return home. Continuing to panic as Goku and Bulma have no intention of turning back, Oolong tries to drive off in their car, stating that not even Goku is a match for the Ox King. However, Bulma just calls out the magic words PP and Oolong pulls over and jumps into the bushes to take another dump. Elsewhere, Poir looks on the radar and notices the group started moving again, Yamcha stating they're going to Mount Frypan after all. He thinks the Ox King probably has the six Dragon Ball, to which Poir suggests they should cut their losses and give up. However, Yamcha thinks about how Goku is Son Gohan's grandson, and Son Gohan and the Ox King were both apparently students of Master Roshi. His thought process is interrupted though, as the two hear someone screaming in the distance. It's a little girl, running from a huge T-Rex. The girl has a round blade sticking from the top of her helmet, and she takes it off and throws it at the dinosaur, cutting off its head. The blade comes back to her like a boomerang, and the dinosaur's remains freak her out, as she fires a beam from her helmet, blowing the body and the severed head to pieces. Yamcha and Poir's jaws drop at the sight of this, then the girl runs some more and sees the two of them. Yamcha greets her, but still in fear, she screams and fires off her helmet beam again, nearly shooting Yamcha in the crotch. Yamcha then whacks her on the back of the head, knocking her out. The two hop back in their car and continue along towards Mount Frypan. Poir noting that Yamcha was able to keep his composure around that girl, but Yamcha says it's because she was younger than him. Goku, Bulma, and Oolong arrive in an abandoned, run-down village at the foot of the flaming mountain, with lots of skeletons scattered around. Bulma complains about the heat, but Oolong tells her to be quiet so the Ox King doesn't hear her. Bulma checks the dragon radar and notices the Dragon Ball is definitely in the castle atop the flames. She asks Goku if he can get up there with the flying Nimbus, and so he calls out for it, Oolong getting pissed at him for yelling so loud. Goku flies over the flames and heads toward the castle in the middle, but quickly discovers it's too hot. While Bulma does her usual complaining, Oolong says they should just give up, and suddenly, a large, axe-wielding shadow comes from behind them. An axe flies and gets caught in the wall right in front of the two. Bulma and Oolong turn around and scream, as it was the Ox King standing before them. He takes his axe out of the wall, and surmises they've come to steal his castle's treasure. The two frantically assure him that they haven't, but Goku comes back, saying it was too hot to get inside the castle. He then notices the Ox King and wonders who the big guy is, Bulma frantically introducing him as to not lose her life. The Ox King, however, recognizes the flying Nimbus Goku was riding on and wants to know where he got it from. Goku says he got it from a guy named Roshi, and the Ox King says that Roshi is also known as Master Roshi, a martial artist, and excitedly asks if he knows where he lives now. Bulma says he's probably somewhere off the coast, and the Ox King gets excited about finally being able to go back to his castle. In his celebration though, he spots Goku's power pole and asks about that as well. Goku says he got it from his grandpa, to which the Ox King asks if his grandfather is son Gohan, and Goku says he is. The Ox King is excited to meet Gohan's grandson, and Yamcha and Poir watch from afar, noting that that kid actually managed to befriend the Ox King after all. The Ox King explains that Goku's grandpa was Master Roshi's first disciple, while he was his second. While Oolong marvels at how strong Goku really is, Bulma can't believe that the perverted Roshi they met was such an amazing person. The Ox King then acts a favor of Goku. He says that an artifact called the Bansho Fan, which Master Roshi possesses, is a powerful tool that can put out the mountain's fire, so he wants Goku to take the flying Nimbus and go ask to borrow it. Goku then asks for a Dragon Ball in return, showing the Ox King the four-star ball as a reference. The Ox King's seen one of those before and says he'll happily give it to Goku afterwards, and in the distance, this is Yamcha's first viewing of a Dragon Ball, as he's surprised at how small it is. Goku prepares to leave on the flying Nimbus, but the Ox King asks him to wait, as he needs one more favor. Yesterday, he had sent his only daughter Chi-Chi off to find Master Roshi for the same purpose, and since she'll probably be on the way, he asks asks Goku to find her and take her with him. He even offers Chi-Chi to be his bride in return. The Ox King takes out a photo of her for reference, and Oolong thinks she's really cute. Yamcha in the distance freaks out with Poir, as the girl in the picture is the one he'd knocked out earlier. The two then hop in their car and speed back to the little girl to avoid trouble. Chi-Chi wakes up and sees him, preparing to use her helmet beam on him. However, Yamcha tells Chi-Chi to wait, and she wonders how he knows her name. Yamcha says he's sorry about knocking her out, and that he loves her for some reason. Chi-Chi is very embarrassed, as she can't 
believe this. Yamcha says to look into his face to prove he's not lying about his love for her, but she thinks he looks funny with that missing tooth, which strikes a nerve. Chi Chi, however, continues to blush with all this love stuff, but Yamcha and Par notice Goku approaching in the distance and take off. Goku spots the girl and asks if she's Chi Chi. She wonders why a lot of people know her name today and surmises that he must love her too. Goku explains what the Ox King sent him to do and tells Chi Chi to hop on the flying Nimbus with him. She wonders how it's possible to ride it and Goku says she needs to be pure of heart. Aborting the cloud, she pulls on Goku's tail to get leverage and he falls off in pain. Goku says his tail is his weak point and Yamcha overhears this in the distance as the two fly off. With this new information, Yamcha tells Poir that they'll sit and wait for the group to get the sixth Dragon Ball and then follow them on the way to the seventh. Nimbus flies through the desert where Goku decides to pat Chi Chi with his foot to see if she's a girl. She screams and knocks him off the cloud, then crashes into some rocks. The two then take off again and Goku wonders why Chi Chi got so mad. She scolds him a bit, but then thinks that she might as well become his bride now. Over the ocean, Goku decides to ask a dolphin about Master Roshi's house or Kame house and it points them in the right direction. Roshi is pleasantly surprised to see him again as they arrive on the island and Goku greets him with a smile. Goku tells Master Roshi how great the flying Nimbus is, to which he responds saying that it was a gift from God himself. Goku's impressed and meanwhile, Roshi mistakes Chi Chi for Bulma, asking if she shrunk the last time they saw each other. But Goku says this is a different girl, the Ox King's daughter, Chi Chi. Chi Chi then asks Goku if this is really Master Roshi. She wants to test him, so she throws her helmet blade at him to see if he'll dodge. Roshi does turn around to avoid it, but the tip of the staff he was carrying was cut off and the blade goes right into his head. Chi Chi isn't convinced that he's the famous Master Roshi, but he yells at her, saying he was just unable to dodge the blade at top speed. He pulls out his driver's license to prove who he is, and Chi Chi, realizing it's him now, pulls the blade from his head. With a band-aid on now, Roshi asks why they came, and Goku says they need the Bansho fan. Chi Chi asks him to let them borrow it to put out the fire on Mount Frypan, Goku then promising to bring it back when they're done with it. Having heard about the situation at Mount Frypan, Roshi agrees to let them borrow it, but on one condition. He pulls Goku to the side and says he'll let him have the fan if he can have a go at Bulma's breast. The turtle scolds him for that, but Roshi says he'd like to have a going away present before he dies. The turtle, however, calls his bluff, revealing that Master Roshi drank an immortality potion, so he's nowhere near death. Goku, however, figures it would be alright to just poke at Bulma's chest, and the two strike a deal, but Roshi says it has to stay a secret from Chi Chi. Roshi then goes in and searches his house, but he can't find the fan anywhere. The turtle then reminds him that he used it as a tablecloth one night, and Roshi remembers he spilled wonton soup on it and threw it out since he couldn't clean it. Chi Chi starts crying as she thinks all hope is lost, but Roshi says he'll go to Mount Frypan and put out the fire himself. He changes his clothes, but unable to ride the Nimbus back with the two, he calls for baby Gamera, another turtle who comes flying onto the island. Roshi hops on and follows Goku and Chi Chi, as Chi Chi wonders if he can really put the fire out himself. Back at Mount Frypan, Goku explains to the Ox King that the fan is gone, but Roshi is coming himself to extinguish the fire. Roshi finally arrives, and as his former pupil warmly greets him, he immediately vomits from dizziness of riding with baby Gamera. Roshi surveys the situation and then calls the Ox King over. He lectures him about killing people to protect his treasure and the Ox King apologizes, saying he was overcome by greed and stating his treasure doesn't matter so long as the fire is extinguished. Oolong is amazed that the great Ox King was apologizing and meanwhile, Roshi nudges Goku about their agreement. He, Goku, and Bulma all move to the side and Roshi has Goku ask if he can touch Bulma's chest. Roshi then says if she refuses, he won't put out the fire, making it more difficult for her to find the Dragon Ball. Of course, Bulma is angry at Goku for agreeing to this, but Goku says it's just poking at her chest and she yells at him to shut up. She agrees though, but only if Master Roshi can actually extinguish the fire. Roshi then takes off his shirt and shell, revealing his scrawny body. He initially needs a boost from Goku to get up on the ledge, but then begins to do his work. Roshi then powers up in an instant, going from scrawny to a huge mass of muscle. The Ox King realizes Master Roshi is about to use his Kamehameha, and off in the distance, Yamcha's also heard of this technique, as he explains its mechanics to Poir, saying aloud how he's now going to see it used for the first time. Master Roshi positions his hands together and aims them at the flame engulfed Mount Frypan. He unleashes the Kamehameha, and a huge beam comes out of his hands 
creating an explosion that amazes the entire group, and then it's done. With his work completed, Roshi sits down to rest, but the Ox King points out that while the fire has been extinguished, so is the mountain in the castle. Master Roshi nervously says he overdid it, and everyone falls over, shocked at the unintended devastation. Oolong's annoyed with having to search through all the rubble for the Dragon Ball, but Bulma's not worried because they have the Dragon Radar. Yamcha can't believe how powerful Roshi is, and Goku asks him if he can teach him to do the Kamehameha as well. Roshi, however, says it's impossible for him to learn so quickly, as it took him 50 years of training to master the technique. Goku, however, manages to perform a small Kamehameha, destroying the car given to him by Yamcha. He's a bit disappointed that it wasn't as great as the one Master Roshi did, but the Ox King is amazed, saying that it's expected from Gohan's grandson. Surprised to hear this, Master Roshi now understands and recalls that he heard Gohan had found and raised a child with a tail. He goes on to ask Goku about his grandfather, but Goku says he's dead. Roshi then offers to train Goku, and he happily accepts, aiming to go as soon as he's done finding all the Dragon Balls. In the distance, Yamcha is amazed, as it's rare to be taken in as one of Master Roshi's students. Poir again suggests giving up on the Dragon Balls, but Yamcha declines, still prepared to go through with his plan. After sifting through some rocks, Bulma finally finds the Seven Star Ball, celebrating until she notices Goku's blown up their car. The Ox King says not to worry though, and gives the group a capsule with a new car. Bulma then checks the Dragon Radar, noting the last Dragon Ball is to the west. They prepare to leave, until Master Roshi asks her if she's forgotten something. Bulma then pulls Oolong to the side and says to turn into her and take her place, otherwise she'll say those magic words again. Oolong reluctantly agrees and transforms into Bulma. He goes over to Roshi and starts flirting with him, while the real Bulma gets pissed in the distance. Oolong keeps teasing about giving him a puff puff and finally drops the top as Roshi goes to town. Bulma knocks Oolong over the head after the ordeal, saying he made her look like a pervert and meanwhile, Goku sits waiting in the back seat of the car. Chi Chi tells Goku when she's older, she wants him to come back so she can be his bride. Goku doesn't understand, but says if she'll give him something, he agrees to come back for it. Bulma and Oolong finally get in the car as they all say thanks and goodbye, as Yamcha and Par continue to tell them, but this car they have is much faster than the one they were following before. Yamcha tells Par to get the Silver Star model so they can keep up, and they all continue on in search of the final Dragon Ball. The three continue along into a land filled with giant mushrooms. Oolong glances down and says they're almost out of gas, but Yamcha and Par are still following close behind. They pull into a town, and everyone runs indoors when they see them, confusing the group. At the gas station, the attendant nervously fills their tank up, and Bulma walks off to buy some more capsules. As she walks down the street, she thinks everyone is running away from her because of her beauty. The gas station attendant finishes, and Oolong tells him they'll have to wait for Bulma to get back with the money, but he tells Oolong that's not necessary. Bulma, meanwhile, while, picks out the capsule she wants, but rather than charge her, the man in the store says they're free. As she walks down the street thinking about her great deal she just got, two guys carrying guns and wearing rabbit ears suddenly pull into town. Bulma stops at a clothing store and picks out an old Arabian style outfit, not particularly fond of it, but glad to get out of that bunny girl outfit. The salesman asks if she's a member of the rabbit gang, but Bulma is confused, as she's never heard of it. The salesman then yells at her for wearing such a misleading outfit and kicks her out of the store. She then notices the townspeople are no longer scared of her as she walks down the street. Yamcha and Poir watch as Bulma returns to the car with her stuff, and Goku asks if she's got any food since he's hungry. The guys with rabbit ears then show up and kick over an apple stand, complaining about the taste, and a little kid runs in front of them to his mom. The guys get mad about the kid running in their path, and one of them kicks the mother to the ground. The other guy notices Bulma, and the two go over and start flirting with her. However, she's completely uninterested and wants them to go away, now understanding why the townspeople were so afraid of her earlier. Earlier. Unhappy with her response though, one of the guys pull a pistol on her. Bulma then tells Goku that these are bad guys and he should beat them up, as Goku smirks, punching the guy with the pistol in the gut and kicking him in the face, knocking him out. The other guy revs up to fire his own gun at the kid, but Goku jumps over him and pulls out his power pole, poking him on the butt and knocking him down as well. Happy that he got to fight a little, the trio prepare to leave, Yamcha stating those idiots were no match for Goku. One of the guys however panics and pulls out a radio, calling for their boss to come into town. The townspeople hear this and begin to run away, much to the dragon team's confusion. The two guys get back up, and Bulma takes the opportunity to ask about this boss of theirs. They say how the group will be turned into carrots and eaten now, and Oolong wants to run away, but Goku says everything's okay since they didn't do anything wrong. Shortly after, a funny little rabbit car pulls into town. A rabbit wearing sunglasses gets out of the car and asks his henchmen who were the ones that defied the rabbit gang. They point to the dragon team, but Bulma and Oolong 
don't think the boss doesn't look like much. Yamcha in the distance, however, thinks to himself, as the boss looks oddly familiar. The boss says it's shameful how his subordinates were beaten by a child and leaps over to ask Bulma to shake hands. Yamcha then recognizes the stranger as Monster Carrot, but by then, it's too late. Bulma slaps his hand away and immediately turns into a carrot. Goku and Oolong are shocked, and Yamcha confirms his suspicions, saying that anyone who touches Monster Carrot will turn into a carrot themselves. Goku prepares to challenge the rabbit, but he reminds him that if he touches him, he'll transform as well. Oolong reminds Goku to use his power pole to avoid contact, and Goku attempts to whack Monster Carrot with it. The rabbit manages to evade the attack though, threatening to eat Bulma in her carrot form if he doesn't stop. Goku tries to think of what to do next, but Oolong cowers and drives off. Monster Carrot laughs about his untrustworthy friend and tells the two guys to attack Goku, as he can't fight back or Bulma will be done for. The two then begin to pummel Goku as Yamcha watches in the distance. As things start to look dicey, Yamcha says that he and Poir have no choice but to step in or they'll never get the Dragon Balls. He tells Poir to change into a bird and grab the carrot, and as his trusty sidekick manages to swoop in and get it, Yamcha jumps down off the roof of the gas station, elbows one of the guys in the back of the head, and then kicks the other guy in the face, saving Goku. He shouts to Goku that he saved the carrot and to attack the boss with the power pole. Goku asks where he came from, and after Yamcha Yamcha yells at him to hurry up, Goku prepares to attack the boss. Monster Carrot frantically says that if he kills him though, the girl will stay a carrot, but Goku whacks him over the head anyway. Par then gives Goku the carrot, and he orders the rabbit to change Bulma back. Monster Carrot then claps his hands, and Bulma returns to normal, unaware of what happened to her. As he ties up the rabbit gang, Goku explains to Bulma that Yamcha and Par helped to save her. While Bulma excitedly looks around for Yamcha, we see that he's hiding behind a building nearby, as if he were to get close to Bulma now, he'd faint from his fear of women. Goku then comes up with an idea to get rid of the rabbit gang and tells his power pole to stretch up to the sky, taking them with him. When he gets back, he explains to Bulma that the rabbits are now on the moon, where they're shown to likely spend the rest of their lives. As their journey continues, Bulma, Oolong, and Goku continue driving through the land filled with giant mushrooms. Goku calls Oolong a coward for running away earlier, and afterward, Oolong asks Bulma what she wants to wish for. She says a dreamy boyfriend, which annoys Oolong as they've been risking their lives for such a stupid wish. Meanwhile, a tall woman with long black hair stands at the top of one of the mushrooms above. She radios to a man named Pilaf of her current location, and informs him that a single car is on the road. He says the ones they've been looking for must be in that car, and tells the woman to execute their plan as they're the ones carrying the Dragon Balls. Oolong and Bulma continue to argue over the worth of her intended wish, when suddenly their car is struck and sent flying into a giant mushroom, where it explodes. The three are thrown off to the side, and a giant robot hops over to the car's remains. Piloting the robot is Shu, a dog in a ninja suit who begins looking for the Dragon Balls in the wreckage. He soon finds the suitcase with all the Dragon Balls in it and takes off, much to the group's surprise. Bulma yells at Goku to catch him, and so he calls for the flying Nimbus and takes off in pursuit. Goku stumbles upon a now empty robot and yells at it. There's no response, so he taps it with his power pole and it falls over. Goku assumes it must be dead, and Meanwhile, Bulma thinks the thief must have known about the Dragon Balls, and Oolong thinks they should just give up. He tells Bulma that he would be her boyfriend instead, and she just yells at him, completely disregarding the idea. Goku returns, saying he defeated the thief, but the Dragon Balls weren't there, making Bulma angry. She cries about being robbed of all her Dragon Balls, until Goku points out that he still has his grandpa's 4-star ball. Bulma then arrogantly laughs at the thieves for forgetting one, and declares that they'll use the Dragon Radar to find their location. Oolong, however, points points out that the car is destroyed, and Bulma remembers that the capsules were in the briefcase with the Dragon Balls, crying out once again. Poir and Yamcha, however, notice in the distance that the group have lost their Dragon Balls, and decide they have no choice but to help again. They pull over in their car to greet the group, and Bulma is extremely excited to see Yamcha again. Meanwhile, Shu and the woman known as Mai drive along to take the Dragon Balls back to their boss Pilaf, stating that now, he'll take control of the entire world. Cutting back to the group, Oolong says he's glad Yamcha showed up, to which Yamcha lies, saying it was completely a coincidence. Bulma then starts cuddling up against him, and he freaks out, nearly crashing the car. Meanwhile inside a big castle, Shu and Mai apologize to Pilaf, who's shown to be a tiny man with pointy ears, for only getting 6 out of the 7 Dragon Balls. Fortunately for them, he's not that angry, as the 7th Dragon Ball is on their way to them. Mai then notices that Goku's group have arrived on the security monitor, and Pilaf thinks they must also have a 
radar of some sort to have arrived so soon. As everyone stands outside the castle, Goku's impressed at the size, while Par is worried about Yamcha after his reaction to Bulma. They head inside and creep quietly along the brick walls until Goku spots some arrows on the floor pointing forward. They decide to follow along until they come to a dead end and a wall drops behind them. Now trapped in a tiny room as Pilaf can't believe they fell for such a dumb trick. Bulma and the group realize there's no way to escape, while Pilaf is excited about finally getting ready to rule the world. Suddenly, his lackeys show up and say they couldn't find the missing Dragon Ball in the car that the group drove. Pilaf surmises that one of them must be carrying it, and all three look at the security monitor. In the Dragon Team's room, Pilaf suddenly appears on a monitor in the wall and introduces himself. Bulma gets angry at him for stealing their Dragon Balls, while Pilaf is is annoyed at them for still having one. Pilaf continues on, telling them they should have the ball with the four stars on it and to hand it over, but Bulma refuses. Pilaf then says that if she won't cooperate, then he'll just do something perverted to her, and a mechanical grabber comes through the ceiling and takes her away. The grabber takes Bulma to the control room where Pilaf is, and he once again demands to have the last Dragon Ball. Bulma gives him the finger, and so Pilaf prepares to do something a little more persuasive. Dramatically, Pilaf blows her a kiss, and the two lackeys start blushing. Pilaf is also red in the face and thinks she'll be willing to talk now. Bulma, however, is unfazed, listing off a ton of perverted things she thought he was going to do instead. Pilaf then freaks out while his two lackeys are beside themselves, filled with embarrassment that she's even able to say such nasty things. He then sends her back into the other room, annoyed that his technique didn't work. Mai suggests that they use sleeping gas and then search for the ball, which Pilaf agrees to. Gas begins to come out of the walls in the small room and everyone passes out. A bit later, a wall opens and Pilaf walks in to get the Dragon Ball, but he inhales the gas and passes out too. His two lackeys covering up come up behind him, and Shu takes Pilaf to bed. Mai, meanwhile, searches the group and finds the four-star ball in Goku's pouch. After some time, Pilaf and his two lackeys gather outside, the boss still feeling the effects of the gas, but pleased that his henchmen have finally gotten all seven Dragon Balls. Back inside, the group is now conscious, Goku surmising his kicks to the wall would be ineffective, and Yamcha tells Goku Goku he needs to use the Kamehameha to get them out. Goku wants to know how Yamcha knows about that, but Yamcha yells, saying that doesn't matter right now. The seven balls are gathered, and Pilaf stands over them, ready to summon the Dragon God. Goku performs the Kamehameha, but it only opens a small hole in the wall. Yamcha looks through it and sees the bad guys are out there, noting that they still haven't summoned the Dragon God yet. He tells Para to transform into a bat and fly down there, and Bulma yells at Oolong to do the same, otherwise she'll make him have to take a dump again. The two fly towards Pilaf as he begins to summon Shenron, and as the balls start to glow, the Dragon God miraculously emerges from them. As Pilaf prepares to make his wish, Oolong tells Para they should run away, but then he suddenly gets the idea to make a wish before Pilaf does. As Pilaf begins to wish for world domination, Oolong runs over and wishes for a pair of panties, much to the gang's surprise. Everyone watches as a pair of panties fall from the sky landing on Oolong's head, and having granted it the one wish, Shenron disappears and the Dragon Balls disperse in seven different directions. Yamcha and Bulma are happy that the perverted Oolong saved the day, and Goku asks Bulma why all the Dragon Balls scattered the way they did. She tells him that's what happens after a wish is granted, but Goku isn't happy that his grandfather's four-star ball is gone now. Pilaf of course is pissed, and tells Mai and Shu to catch the pig and cat, threatening to kill them all. Yamcha says it's pathetic how easily they were caught, but Oolong says the bad guys had Ray guns. The dragon team now trapped in a room with a glass ceiling and steel walls. Goku thinks it'll be easy to escape, but Bulma explains to him that it's super reinforced glass. Yamcha gets upset, saying how they need to get out of there so they can gather the Dragon Balls again. Bulma, however, says they can't gather the Dragon Balls so soon, as after a wish is granted, the balls turn to stone, and you can't make another wish for one year. As Yamcha sits in disappointment that he'll be scared of women for another year, Pilaf comes in through the PA system and declares declares that they'll all be punished. He explains that in the middle of the day, the sun will make the room they're in heat up so intensely that it'll kill everyone inside. The group then begin to panic, as they're at a loss for what their next move will be. Yamcha attempts punching the wall, and Goku fires off a Kamehameha as well, but nothing works. Yamcha says it's useless to continue, and Pilaf laughs gleefully about the group's fate, getting ready for bed with Shu and Mai as he says he's looking forward to tomorrow afternoon. Goku is starving, and thus powerless, while Bulma yells at Oolong for saying they'll die. Meanwhile, Poir watches the full moon, saying how it's nice to see a pretty thing before they
they all die. Goku then says a monster comes out when there's a full moon, and Bulma hopes he isn't thinking of the wolf man instead of coming up with a way to escape. Goku says it's true though, as his grandpa was killed by this monster. Yamcha thinks it must have been an incredible beast then to have killed the martial arts master son Gohan. Oolong asks what it looked like, but Goku says he was sleeping at the time so he didn't see. He says that his grandpa told him to never look at the full moon, but he doubts it's related. The others are then shocked, and Bulma nervously asks Goku if he looked at the full moon the night his grandfather died. He says yes because he had to go out to pee. Yamcha nervously stating Goku never seemed like a normal little boy, and Bulma agrees, but thinks it must be a coincidence. Goku wonders what's wrong with everyone, and Oolong thinks they should test the waters, but Bulma says on the off chance that it's true, they'd all be in danger. She then points at the moon and tells Goku not to look at it, which prompts him to look at it anyway. Goku then gets a strange look on his face and begins viciously transforming into a giant ape. He smashes through the castle around him, waking up Pilaf, Mai, and Shu, much to everyone else's terror. Goku begins moving around, continuing to smash up the castle. Yamcha then realizes that Goku has released them from their prison and pointlessly tells Goku to turn back to normal now. The ape breaks into the room where Pilaf, Shu, and and Mai are sleeping, and the three of them start running for their lives. Meanwhile, the others take the opportunity to climb out of their prison cell. The pajama-clad Pilaf group quickly runs into a room in their castle, jumps into a plane, and quickly takes off. Yamcha then grabs Bulma, Oolong, and Poir, carrying them all under his arms and runs. Goku notices the plane flying away and grabs a portion of the castle to throw at them. It manages to land a direct hit and the plane crashes, the castle piece then landing over near Yamcha and the others. Pilaf, Mai, and Shu have all survived, as have Yamcha, Oolong, and Poir. Bulma, however, is stuck under the castle piece, and Goku comes stomping along before Yamcha can get her out from under it. Poir reminds him about Goku's tail being his weak point, and Yamcha hopes it'll still be the same, even with the monster form. Yamcha grabs onto the tail and Goku stops, then yelling to Poir to turn into a pair of scissors to cut it off. The deed is done, and with that, Goku regresses back to normal, left sleeping naked while Yamcha holds his shrunk severed tail. The next morning, everyone reflects on what happened the previous night. Oolong thinks it was terrible that Goku put them in such a dilemma, but Yamcha thinks otherwise, since it gave him the chance to escape. Bulma says it's probably best if they don't tell him he was the one who killed his grandfather, and Goku wakes up not long after Oolong's comment about him being an alien. It doesn't take long for Goku to wonder where his clothes went, so Bulma tells Oolong to give him the panties he has. However, he refuses and just gives him his pants instead. Goku suddenly falls over and says, Says it's hard to stand up, but Yamcha says it's probably because he isn't used to balancing without his tail yet. Goku then looks at his back and can't believe his tail is gone, but immediately gets over it and everyone else falls over. He then wonders where his power pole is, and Yamcha says it's probably still in the castle ruins. Having been the gift his grandpa gave him, Goku runs to go and get it, falling down every few seconds as he runs over. Oolong wonders what they should do now, since it'll be a year before they can use the Dragon Balls again. Bulma and Yamcha are both disappointed that it'll be another year before they get their wishes for a dreamy boyfriend and a woman to marry, but they suddenly get a realization and face one another. Goku then returns with his power pole and looks at Oolong, asking why he's so annoyed. He then points over to Yamcha and Bulma, who are blissfully holding hands and dancing along with Poir. Bulma tells Goku that she and Yamcha are going to the city and asks if Goku wants to come along. Goku, however, says he really wants to go train with Master Roshi to get stronger. Bulma asks Oolong what he'll do and he decides to go to the city too, since there will be a lot of of girls. Goku then says he wants to gather the Dragon Balls again in a year, but Bulma and Yamcha say that they don't need them anymore as they found one another. Goku still wants to find his grandpa's four star ball though, but doesn't know how to locate it. Bulma then gives him the Dragon Radar as a present, which he'll be able to use in one year's time. Yamcha pulls out a capsule with an airplane, then telling Goku to do his best and surpass Master Roshi. Goku then calls for the Flying Nimbus, and the Dragon Team split up and go their separate ways. But as Goku heads in the direction of Master Master Roshi, what kind of severe training awaits him? Find out next time when we summarize Dragon Ball's 21st World Martial Arts Tournament Saga, The Strongest Under the Heavens. It's really refreshing to read the OG Dragon Ball story again, just to remind you where it all started. If you're ready to see the next arc though, be sure to like the video and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.